Hey everybody, Jed here with Skookum Arts, and today I wanted to show you what we've done for our cursor in our game. So our game relies very heavily on a cursor, and there's some things that we need for our cursor to be able to do that you can't really do with the operating system cursor. So really our only option is to create um, a virtual cursor, and some of the things that we need it to do, and I'll actually show you here really quick. Um, we need the cursor to be kind of repositionable. So if you've noticed, uh, when I first entered um, this mode in our game called Puzzle Mode, uh, when I very first entered it, I was able to snap the cursor to the center of the screen. That way, so in our game, when you're switching between puzzles, it's just nice to be able to position the cursor in the center of the screen. Because it's positionable, we can have it like attached to things. So if you'll notice the black cursor on the screen here, when I push this sign into this collider, I will actually have this cursor stick with the sign. Um, and you can't really do that with the operating system cursor because it's not um, settable, it's position. Um, one of the other things that we can do is, with the virtual cursor, we can have uh, controllers updated. So it's very nice because we can have the cursor directly updated with the controller, and so it just kind of works with our existing systems. We don't really have to do as much uh, work for that. And one of the other kind of benefits is we can also uh, do kind of contextual feedback. So you could switch out this uh, cursor visual uh, with different styles, or maybe it could be like fully 3D or something. So let's take a look at what's happening within the scene. So our cursor is basically broken up into two uh, different pieces. The first one is this uh, red sphere, and this sphere is the point that is referenced by the puzzle, uh, and it's referenced for moving the signs around and connecting the doors up, and essentially the red sphere is the 3D cursor. Uh, the other element to the cursor is the actual visual, and that is this black cursor. It's merely just a visual, it doesn't actually do anything, and um, it's just there for representing where the cursor is. And it is actually drawn with a separate camera. It's drawn with a separate camera so that it's not obscured by other objects. We can have that camera render after the main camera, and if you were to have 3D elements, 3D objects within the foreground, uh, then when you're in puzzle mode and you're moving your mouse around, it won't be obscured. It won't be, you know, behind that object. So, one of the reasons why we have these two cursors separated like this is so that we can do things like what I showed you earlier, where whenever we move a sign around, you, you can notice that both the red, the actual cursor, which is the, the red sphere, and then the visual are both locked together. But as we move this sign and it collides, uh, the red sphere actually continues moving on, but we can lock the visual to the sign. So another couple things that we want to do is um, actually bind the visual cursor, or our cursor, and the operating system cursor within the game window. Um, so if you'll see, if I, if I jam this cursor up into the uh, window, it actually just clamps it within uh, the game window. And then if I reveal the operating system cursor, if I try to leave this window, it actually snaps it back to center. So what I said earlier about um, the cursor, uh, the operating system cursor not actually being um, positionable um, is true, but there is one thing you can do, which is snap it back to center. So it just so happens that um, we can use that um, the ability to lock the operating system cursor to the uh, center of the screen, we can use that to our advantage for keeping the cursor within the game window. The main reason we want to keep the operating system cursor within the game window is so that, let's just say you're playing the game within a, a window and you're in puzzle mode, you're clicking, dragging things around, we don't want the cursor to um, actually escape out of the window and then start clicking on things within your computer. So let's go take a look at how we transform the movement from our um, our actual mouse and controller into a position for the 3D cursor. 
So it's pretty simple here. Every single frame, what we wanna do is we wanna get um, our mouse movement, which we can do by getting the mouse position and then getting the mouse position from last frame. And then we just get the delta from that. And then for our controller, we can get its input for a given axis, and then we can um, give it you know, some sensitivity. And then all these things uh, will then, both the, the input from the mouse and from the controller will then be added to essentially a, a middleman, which is, um, this is the mouse position uh, variable that we're constantly updating every single frame with input from the mouse and from the controller. And then this is what actually drives the position for our 3D cursor. So if we take a look at our 3D cursor, essentially every single frame, we're taking that, that, that middleman, that mouse position, and we are taking its position in screen space, and we're transforming that into a position in world space. And there's this, um, there's this function here that you essentially give it a point on the screen and it will in return give you a point in world space that is essentially underneath that screen space point. So if we just draw that out really quick, we have our camera and we have, uh, this is the screen. So here's our signs. Um, this is the point that we have on screen. This is constantly being updated by our mouse and by our controller. Um, then we want to transform this into a point actually in the plane of our puzzle. And so what we do is we give this point to the, the camera and it returns a point that's directly under that screen position. Um, and then we just essentially assign that to our world cursor. And the same thing happens with our UI, except the UI is in a, a slightly different uh, plane. But yeah, that's basically it. And from there, we can actually update that, that mouse position however we want. We can just have a, a function up here to set the, the mouse position to anywhere on screen. Uh, we can also have some stuff to, to have the uh, visual cursor follow something like a, like a rigid body. So because the UI or the visual part of the cursor is independent from everything else, um, we can just update it and have it follow an object within the world. So I think that's basically it. If you have any questions or um, I left something out, uh, definitely don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. And uh, if you want, uh, you can follow us on um, our social medias linked here and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more insight into how we're doing what we're uh, working on. And also, if you have time, if you could hop over to uh, our Steam page and give our game a wish list, that would be much appreciated. Thank you.